most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. <laughs> Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together we have the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Bob, Bob. and Brad. Now, Brad is going to say these words, and we're going to see if he says them correctly, because I don't know how to say them. So, <laughs> Okay, so. these are diagnoses of back problems, and they're right. actually quite prevalent across society. Uh, but the thing is, is when a doctor says this to you, you're going to say, oh my God, I have this. We're going to explain to you what you have. It's not as bad as these words are. Right. The first one is... Spondylosis. 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 The second one is spondylysis. Spondylysis. <laughs> and the last one is spondylolisthesis. Spondylolisthesis. Yeah, they say D. The they D do? Spondylolisthesis. -E -E <laughs> wow. Anyways, you can Google it and they'll actually pronounce it for you. They all sound like they're the, almost the same thing, but they're all really quite different to some extent. Right, they, Brad? right. Especially the first one to the last one that we talked about. So let's do that. Let's just go through them one at a time yeah. in case you have this and you're kind of wondering, what do I have? My, especially the first one, spondylosis. Right. It's no. It's, it's such not a, a big deal. This is, is what really almost probably everybody has to some extent as you get older. Right. It's just regular wear and tear. Wear. Right? If you look it up, it says wear normal wear and tear on the back. And, and an interesting thing is spondy. That I believe it's Greek or Latin. It just means vertebra. Oh, it does. Right. So that's so, a base they're talking about. That's why all three of these have the first. And also, this is like just an abnormality, isn't it? Right. Somewhat? I mean, yeah. uh, if you break these words down, it, it becomes not so scary. So that one is really not a scary one because, again, like I said, almost probably everybody has a right. little bit of that. When you, you get, get over older, 60 years old, you probably 50 could. 50 even, I would say. Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, <laughs> I've so, got all three of these. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. And, and so we're going to talk about some exercises for all of these at the end, but let's right. go through them first. Oh, before we go too much. Further, Brad, Good too, point, Bob. Um, if you are new to our channel, which a lot of you are, please take a second to subscribe. Our subscription button is over here, besides Brad. Probably down there or up there. Yeah, we provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, and pain free, and we upload every day. Right. So, and we're going to do a lot of education in this video that's going to enlighten you with these terms. Now, the second one spondylolysis. Spondylolysis. Okay. This one's a little more technical, and this one I got to get the spine out for you. This can happen in the low back or the neck. Usually it's the low back. So we're gonna look at the low back and it's typically in the lower lumbar vertebra, oftentimes at L5, the lowest one, okay? Cause that's where most of the stress is. Uh, we're not gonna get into that, you'll just have to believe us. So that makes sense. Now what it is, as I'm gonna show you, where did my pin go, Bob? Right here, Fred. Oh, good. This, you want to show it on there or on that one? Yeah, well, we're going to do both, okay. actually. Uh, there's a structure in the back called the par, pars inticularis. This is one I, I had. Pars inticularis. Yeah, I remember from school, but I don't yeah. tell, use it very often in the clinic. Okay, but I know where it is. It's, we're going to look at it here. If, if I could pull these two vertebrae out so it's easier to see, we have this. Can go up there, Brad? Yep. Uh, i got to get my glasses on because this is a smaller area, but I have it highlighted. Now, if you look at here's L5 and L4, let's say we have, in this case, it's L4. Here's a disc in here. This I put in there just to represent. That's where the spinal cord goes, okay? okay and there's room down there right. for it. I know someone might get technical and say the spinal cord doesn't go before L1, and we're not going to get right. into that. This red mark right here on this part of the bone is the pars articularis. Sure. And that is usually, it becomes a stress fracture. And it can actually become more of a stress fracture and break apart. But when it starts to do that, it progresses to spondylolisthesis, which we'll which get we'll into show a little it bit. Next. Right. Yeah. So right there can cause problems. And you look at the nerve right here. If this inflames because of the stress fracture, that nerve can get involved and that can cause more pain and symptoms that you want to avoid. Well, you had some interesting statistics on this, Brad, that I never knew. One, that it actually happens in young adults, boys. Right, you know. adolescents, you know, yeah. usually in the early teenage years, uh, often associated with active people that are in athletics, contact sports, or repetitive Which makes motions. Sense. Things where they extend, because that puts a lot of pressure on that part of the vertebra to cause that stress fracture. So you really think of, I think of young girls as far as gymnasts, because oh, they're right. always in that hyperextended uh, position. Not only that, they're yeah. in hyperextended, and then they land with a tremendous right. amount of force to just jam I'm that. shocked that every one of them doesn't have this. I, 
So, I know, it really is But it is scary. more common in males. And uh, Th um, This is an interesting fact. 50%, uh, they, they estimate 50% of all back pain in that age group is from this diagnosis. Okay? So if you're having back pain at that age, this is one of the things you should consider as right. a possibility. And that right. x-rays would pick that up. And there's a special test, and I'll show you, it's a simple one. Okay, and we've done this on another video quite a while ago, is you stand on one leg and then you bend back into one side. And if that consistently flares it up because you're stressing that stress fracture, that's you can a, do it the other way then too, Brad. Right, right? yeah, stand I mean, on the opposite leg. And if I'm on my left leg, I'm gonna go back and to the left side. So you're looking to see whether or not the pain on the left side on this one is, is being enhanced. Right, so. exactly. So. If you do that and you have pain with that, that's not 100% certain that that's no. what you have. It's just an indicator. It's just one more possibility, uh, you know, uh, pushing towards that idea. Right, right. So. And they estimate 6% of the population have this. Okay. Which isn't a lot, but it's... It's, it's a fair amount yeah, when you start looking at thousands exactly. of people or millions of people. Oftentimes associated with genetics, you know, uh, and then we talked about the other activities. Now let's go to the other one. It's just probably uh, more problematic, and that's spondylolisthesis. Desis. Desis. And is it T H E E? Desis. Yeah, I, 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 I have a hard yeah, time with yeah. it. it is, your daughter is a speech therapist. Maybe she can come in and help us right. out. All right. So, spondylus desis is usually in L4 or L5 or L5 and S1. And the big difference with this is I cannot show you on this, uh, this model, but let's look at this one because I have this diagnosis and actually my L4 shifts over my S, uh, L5 in the anterior or forward direction. So like here Bob is showing. So here's normal, and uh, here's putting forward. Now normally there's a disc between there. Right, you? exactly. But you, you no longer have a disc between nope, those. No, my disc is completely gone, and it looks like, according to the x-rays, that uh, the bone has fused together, and that's what I'm hoping for, so it's more stable. Um, it's but, funny how the body is, I mean, a lot of things the body will heal if you let it. Yeah, if you give it time and yeah. you treat it properly. So we're going to talk about treatment for spondylolysis and spondylolisthesis are very similar. Right. You could do the same exercises and probably get similar results. Sounds good. Each individual is a little different, but that's how we're going to approach it. Um, right, the first one we have everybody do is knees to chest, wouldn't you say, Brad? Yeah. Now, big thing about spondylolisthesis is you want to avoid extension. Actually, with both of these, extension exercises. So you're not going to stretch out like this a lot. Yeah. I'll do this a little bit, but I'm not going to repeat it very often because it, it, my body's talking to me about it. Activities. If you're going to wash the ceiling, have somebody else do it. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried that. Trying to go up. Yeah, yeah it, it, it hurts for the next day or so. So avoid things like that. But one thing that it does do well with is flexion, and that's doing double knees to chest. You could start off single if you want to first right. just yep. stretch a little bit. That's a good point, Bob. You can start out here. I wouldn't do more than 10. I think after 10, you're, you're stretched out enough. Sometimes I will hold this because it feels really good, and this is usually after I've been standing and I'm, you know, in that more of an extension mode, but I won't hold it for minutes. Usually, you know, 20, 30 seconds at the most. When it gets done feeling good, then I'm back to here. The next thing you want to do after you get that range of motion is some strengthening exercises to strengthen the abdominal, the core muscles in the front. The core muscles are all the way in the back, but this is what you want to really become dominant so they protect those vertebrae from shifting again. And I've been doing these for, let's get the ball, could yep. you, Bob? I've been doing these for approximately five years now on a fairly consistent basis. And actually, I've improved quite a bit from four years ago. Yeah. To having back pain every day to now just when I do silly things and abuse it. <laughs> but I'm trying to avoid those things. Sorry, I got my brown shoes on today. I usually have my back shoes. Someone commented on that, Bob, yeah, and they, they were not, not happy with that. That's not good. Yeah, I know. That's what bad. I, I'm sorry, I'm All sorry. Right. I was in a hurry. But this is a great exercise right here. It forces the low back in a good posture. It really works the abdominal muscles well. And you get some hamstring and some hip strengthening as well. Okay, and then I'll just go in this position, and this just feels good, and I'll work the core from this direction. And if you're starting out with these, probably 10 will be good and you're gonna get some sore stomach muscles. You know, if you're fairly fit, 
you know, you'll build up. I usually do 50 of these, and then I stop, and I have a little more routine than that. Then the third one I do is here and here, and I double it up, the double crunch. And I'm thinking about lifting my buttocks up in the air because that will help flex that low back, those low vertebrae, and get those muscles in the front strong. Okay, and then the final one. This is one of my favorite because not only does it strengthen your core, you get the oblique muscles on this one, but right here under your back, with me anyways, it scratches my back and it really feels good. So I do the, the crisscross, elbow to knee, opposite knee, and you do those until you get so, your muscles get fatigued. And those are a wonderful tool. And I really am an advocate of using the ball because it protects your back from overdoing it. And, yes, it uh, does. Otherwise, your back can arch in the opposite direction. It will not do that with the ball. We've got a little bit of squeaky bench here, Brad. I know so. it. Wow. And remember, Brad, we're not just pretty. We're pretty ugly, Bob. No, we're pretty handy. <laughs> oh, so that's again, right. make sure you subscribe. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>